Hello, Krite. Can you make a video on your top 5 favorite weapons? It doesn't have to be purely based on how good they are, but I am expecting performance to affect your weapon ranking list since you do optimization. I'm just curious to see what the favorite weapons of someone knowledgeable in Elden Ring are and why. P.S. I bet I can guess at least 2 out of the 5. Sure, and if you guys want to guess, I'll give you a clue. I don't repeat any weapon classes for my top 5 favorite weapons. For example, if I have a katana at rank 5, there won't be any katanas for rank 4 to 1. To start, I am going to list a few basic criteria on how I rate them. First comes the performance, because it feels better when a weapon I like actually performs well in their specific build, rather than using a nerfed version of another weapon just for the looks. Second comes design, which includes how the weapon looks and any other special factors or attributes that enables a different playstyle. Finally, I also rate them on the playstyle, which is how fun I think playing the weapon is. Let's start with rank 5, the Cross Naginata. Now, I know you're going to groan. Really, Krite? I see these power stands all day. Did this weapon make the list because it's such a good spear? To which my answer will be, I don't really play with power stance spears much. I get tired of seeing people power stance naginatas in the arena too, although I do understand why. Well, its performance is indeed part of the reason why I ranked the cross naginata highly. The cross naginata is fairly long, has the highest AR on multiple infusions, and comes with free base bleed. But in the end, it made my list because I like spears in games in general. And the Cross Naginata has a very eastern design that I think goes well with the looks of a samurai. I am also a sucker for glaives that have a single edge rather than the dual edge of spears. It also comes with a unique light attack chain. I know there are glaives in the halberd section, but I think the Cross Naginata looks better than those even though it is on the thinner side. On a side note, it really is too bad the Pest Glaive's bonus is so little. I wish it got a buff to make its passive more outstanding and a bigger factor in choosing the weapon. Next, rank 4 goes to the Misery Chord. The section that Misery Chord really wins me over is the drastically different playstyle. It allows you to focus on stance breaking for your combat and then following up with a critical hit like the finishing strike of a combo. It is also perfect for swapping into if you use parries as it is a dagger and very light to carry. Like all other light weapons, it also carries bullet type weapon arts well. I like how the Misery Court got its name, which I mentioned as trivia in my daggers video. It also has a very distinct look, and the crit play style is also quite different. For those of you who missed the crit play style after the Flame of Red Mains nerf, I am going to do a video on a new crit build, so be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Now, rank 4 and 5 are both weapons that can be said to be fairly meta, with a very strong performance both within their own weapon class or across the game in general. This is why I will be fairly surprised if you can get the rest of my picks correctly, because some of them are definitely way more unconventional. Rank 3 goes to the Sword of Night and Flame. I know, I know, probably the easiest one of the three to guess. But this sword ranks 3rd in my favorite weapon list due to its design. I like how it allows for an intelligence and faith playstyle, when it is otherwise difficult to do efficiently. I really wish there were more weapons like the Sword of Night and Flame. However, what really convinced me was its unique weapon art, the Night and Flame Stance. This weapon art scaling makes a lot of sense. If you invest more into intelligence, the damage of the Night Stance increases, while if you invest into faith, the Flame Stance's damage increases. It is also a very impactful weapon art that truly makes you feel like you found a legendary weapon. Is it the best straight sword? Definitely not for PvP. But I do think it is the weapon with the biggest personality out of all the weapons in Elden Ring, due to its unique tri-element damage type and its unique weapon art. Rank 2 goes to the Golem Great Bow, mainly for how it looks and its playstyle. I think the design suits a Great Bow perfectly with the layers of rope coiling around the weapon. It really makes me feel the tension behind drawing the great bow string. I think it matches what it does perfectly. I wanted one of these from the very beginning, 
especially after getting shot by the golems carrying them from a mile away on my first encounter. As for playstyle, I really love using the Great Bow in PvP. It is certainly not for everyone, as it is a very different playstyle from all the other weapons in Elden Ring. Aiming slowly and steadily and watching your opponents panic is a ton of fun, even though you do need to make enough time and distance to be able to draw the string safely. Finally, my favorite weapon in Elden Ring is… the Bastard's Stars. Let's first solve the mystery of this weapon's naming for those of you who are curious. To obtain the Bastard's Stars, we have to beat Asto, Natural Born of the Void, in order to obtain the Remembrance of the Natural Born. However, Asto's name wasn't translated properly. In English, he is named Asto, Natural Born of the Void. In Japanese, his name is Ankoku no Otoshiko, Asteru. If you plug this into Google Translate, Google Translate will tell you this roughly translates to Asto, Spawn of Darkness. But translating Otoshiko to Spawn is not entirely accurate, as it leaves out the connotation. A better translation would be a love child, or an undesired child, which translates more closely to bastard. Yes, so it is not that bastard stars is mistranslated. Rather, it is Asto's title that is mistranslated. He should really be Asto, Bastard of Darkness, or Asto, Bastard of the Void. To confirm this, on the Japanese wiki for Elden Ring, we also see Bastard Star's Japanese name, which indeed directly translates to Bastard Stars. Back to the main topic. Why do I like this weapon? Is it because the weapon is OP? No, not really. I mean, it is a flail, which I would say is still one of the weaker weapon classes, even after the many weapon buffs the weapon class has received. Although, I do appreciate it being one of the weapons where you do actually invest into intelligence for maximum gains, rather than one of those unique weapons with intelligence or faith requirements, but you don't actually invest into intelligence or faith to maximize their power. I really love the Asto boss fight that took my breath away the moment I stepped into the vast and beautiful arena, so much so that I nearly got deleted by his laser beam a few moments later. In addition to the boss fight, something else I really liked about the weapon is its design. I am fairly certain that anyone who has actually bothered to try out this weapon will realize that it makes a very unique and noticeable sound. You don't even have to fight with it to hear it. If you just move around with it held in your hand, you can hear the distinct rattling sound. Furthermore, its looks are thematic and fitting. It looks like you're holding some planetary system or a bunch of stars in your hand. Its unique weapon art makes me feel like I'm creating tiny galaxies whenever I'm using it. I just hope they buff this weapon art to give it hyper armor like other weapon arts that lifts your feet off the ground. Please FromSoft, my one big wish for this weapon. Please make it happen. Again, this weapon convinced me due to its unique design and strong personality, rather than strictly being a very powerful weapon. Although I know Bastard Stars is not a popular pick, it still ranks higher for me than some of the game's best weapons, like the Cross Nakinata or Moon Veil vale or whatever. What I am trying to say is, even for someone like me who does all the breakdowns, it doesn't mean my favorite weapon is necessarily the strongest one. Play Elden Ring however you want to, and enjoy its freedom. And this is my top 5 favorite weapon list. If you guys don't mind, please comment your top 5 favorite weapons down below. I'm looking forward to reading what you guys like and the reasons as well. Really looking forward to the DLC, and I hope to find more weapons with strong personalities there too. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite. Signing out.